everybody, this is Praxis. One of the difficult things about working with concrete while you're also trying to make videos is that, at least for me, whenever I mix up a batch of concrete, I'm always feeling like I'm behind the ball, like I want to get that stuff up and uh, set in place before it starts setting up and curing itself. So consequently, I'll oftentimes not do videos, but I did do a lot of work yesterday, even though I didn't do a video. I want to kind of catch you guys up. And in particular, is one thing I'm super excited about, it's this right here. I found this from an old order of six inch cinder block that I'd gotten when I, I received the recent order of cinder blocks they didn't it didn't contain any of the type that you can tap with a hammer and break into two pieces like this here and in this right here uh, I was able to get these guys in place yesterday because I found uh, these bricks in an old order now it, if I hadn't found these I was just gonna kind of build this out with like a little wooden frame and then I'd pour it with concrete and I could have done it that way but it makes it a lot easier. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm working with cinder blocks is because, you know, you don't have to build all the frames and everything. So I was able to find this in an old order. And sometimes I'm a little, I get a little confused when I order things because, like, you'll order six-inch cinder blocks and one time they'll show up and they'll have the, uh, the kind of a mix of the, the type that you can't cut in half and the type that you can cut in half. And it's nice to, you know, work with both of those because they both have their strengths and their weaknesses for, you know, in terms of where you'd want to put them in the wall. Um, but, uh, you know, I just recently ordered them again, and it didn't, uh, didn't come with any of that kind of stuff. So, uh, I don't know, just, it's always a little confusing for me. It's like you never know what to take for granted when you're, uh, you're ordering stuff. Like if you were to order, like, a batch of nails, and then they all show up, and they're made up out of, out of like, cheese, and they, like, try to gaslight you, it's like, yeah, you, nails, sometimes, you, you know, you order nails, sometimes you're going to get nails ma made out of cheese. I don't know why that would be a surprise to you. So, I don't know, in the past, I'd always gotten a mix whenever I ordered co concrete blocks. Uh, I guess that's maybe something not to take for granted, uh, but anyway, I was happy that I found this in one of my old orders, and uh, right now I'm about to get going. I'm going to do another layer on the top here, bring this up another stage, and I think we're going to go two more le levels up. So one more layer of brick, another layer of brick, that'll bring it to about here. I think that'll be good for that height over there, and then we're going to be all, all set. But before I get going, you always want to water everything down, get it all nice and wet. I mentioned the other day it's really important to the curing process. To keep everything moist so that chemical process can uh, you know, happen and uh, you can have nice strong uh, concrete uh, setting up. If it dries out prematurely, it's not going to cure properly. So you want to keep it moist, but then on top of that, oh, I got to get the outside too, right? Uh, but then on top of that, uh, given that I'm going to be putting mortar up on the top of all of these things, you want this top surface definitely to be nice and moist. So when I put my new mortar down, it's not getting all its moisture sucked down into a, a dry brick because these things. They really like sponges. I think it's kind of enjoyable to wet them down, though. I know it's the easiest work I'm going to be doing all day. That's it. Thanks for watching.